shopping and you've been waiting in line for 10 minutes to pay and you're finally near the front, the person in front of you is so busy talking on the phone or they're texting, they've missed the queue to head to the next available cashier. We've all been there, right? Yeah, another good one is when everyone is searching for that elusive parking spot near the door. There's one driver talking on their cell, driving at turtle speed in the middle of the parking aisle. You can't even pass them and you're getting angrier and angrier. Well, get ready for more of that, more and more of that nonsense, because more and more people are embracing technology and ignoring common courtesy. And to talk about that, joining us in the studio, we have Nick Bontis. He's a very tech-savvy uh, instructor at the DeGroote School of Business. And Nick, you know, I know you're a big fan of smartphones and all the latest gadgets, but have you found that now you have to make rules for yourself to make sure that there's times when you're not looking at your gadgets or you know, and ignoring your kids or you, you let yourself be like, this is my free time to do it? Yeah, I mean, the two biggest events, I think, in my life personally are number one, driving. There's just way too much danger involved with taking that little, little glimpse uh, at your phone. And unfortunately, we all do it. And, uh, you know, we're, we're nervous because there might be some police around who are going to check us out. But in addition to you getting a big, big ticket, you know, your life's at stake in the life of others. The second one is at home with the family. Obviously, I've got young kids. And when, they, when daddy comes home from work, uh, they want to play. So uh, the last thing I need to be doing is checking out my email and ignoring my kids. And that seems to be just a huge amount of pressure for individuals right now because, you know, people don't go home and leave work behind. You know, that's a figment of a previous generation. Uh, nowadays, you know, you're always thinking about work. People are always trying to access you, even in the middle of the night. That's terrible, though. You shouldn't be able to do that. And that's the problem, I think, with yeah. uh, all these gadgets and all that, is you can be reached 24-7. Nick, I see a day, maybe not in the, too, in the not too distant future, where people won't know how to deal with each other face-to-face -face because they've never looked people in the <laughs> eye. I don't know about you, but a lot of people I've, th that I've tried to make eye contact with in the last while, they, they never did look me in the eye. They kind of glanced up but they're always looking down, it seems. Yeah, Mark, so uh, yeah. is that the type of generation that we're breeding here with these smartphones? They're never going to look you in the eye because they don't have to? Uh, Mark, you nailed it. I mean, I see it with my students, obviously, uh, Generation Y. I mean, they would rather have an SMS or a text message relationship with their professor than actually walk into my office and speak to me face to face to talk about a grade or a problem in the classroom or something they need to learn. And unfortunately, I can't get across a significant message at 140 characters at a time. So I definitely see it in the new generation where they're more savvy in terms of sending that text message and are a little nervous because they think it's not proper to approach a professor. And I just think they need to do that more often. Wow. According to a survey last year, 48% uh, of Canadian parents said that, that with kids uh, age 11 and or older, they let them carry a cell phone. So imagine you've got an 11, 12-year-old carrying a cell phone mm -hmm. every day. What do you need to teach them about uh, cell phone etiquette and for sure as it relates to when they talk to you, their parent? Because I know when my son is on his iPod, he doesn't have a phone, but he has an iPod, I, I, I practically have to physically move his head up from the screen to get his attention. It is like a drug addiction. Uh, you know, people are obsessed with the technology. I think when it comes to young children, it has to be completely off and away. So physically away, either in the, in the knapsack or in the locker. It cannot be on the person, I think, in the classroom. I think that's ridiculous. Uh, there's got to be school policies in place for that. But on the flip side, as a parent of young children, you know, if there's an emergency situation, I want to be able to, you know, contact my child or have my child contact me. So I think that's okay if they leave their phone, let's say, in their coat jacket, in their locker then it's okay but you're absolutely right Liz once it encroaches on them doing schoolwork then we have a big problem Nick we've been talking for a few years about <clears throat> the, the possibility the likelihood of uh, a high school course dealing with personal finances because so many kids are getting into trouble with credit cards they don't know how to handle money shouldn't we be doing the same thing with the younger generation the grade school kids when it comes to technology and etiquette because we these are the kids who in the future are either going to be looking you in the eye and say hello mr bontis it's nice to see you again i'm looking for a job or they're going to be the ones that are going to be staring down saying yeah hi i'm going to text you right now to ask you for a job I think you nailed it again, Mark. Uh, the issue here also is that with the younger folk, the technology <coughs> is getting smaller and smaller. And we're also going to get into the world of wearable technology, where it's going to be very difficult. Uh, as you can see, I've got my Samsung Galaxy Hold it up here. a little more. Hold it up a little more. Here it is. Yeah. It's a watch. What? And, and it's connected to my Samsung Galaxy Note 3. I can be checking my emails. You wouldn't even know it. I can actually take calls. I can take photographs. So this is an example of wearable technology. You're James Bond, for heaven's sake. That's Dick right. <laughs> and now we're going to have the glasses, so we might be able to to look in a little corner of our screen so when our kids you know in five to ten years we're not going to have the smartphone as the center of the technology digital universe is going to be some sort of wearable technology and i think you're right 
kids are going to have to learn to interface with the physical world as well as that wearable technology because when it's really, really obsessive, you know, I'm just going to be staring at my watch at a Christmas party and that's just as bad. Right. But you're going to be the one that's going to have to teach these kids because aren't not enough teachers know enough about technology that they can pass that knowledge along, which means you're going to probably maybe have 17 or 18 year olds teaching the, you know, the kids in grade two and three. This is what you do, this is what you don't do. Don't make the same mistakes I did when I was your age. And that's why I think it can't be a course. I mean, as most university professors aren't in the avant-garde when it comes to technological adoption. I would suspect the same thing at the high school level. You know, the kids of today are going to adopt that technology way faster than any adult is going to. So to think that we're going to somehow teach them or impart information to a younger generation I think is false. They're going to have to teach each other. And the most important role model here are the parents. Because if the parents are checking out their phones at a party, what do you think the kids are going to be doing as well? Oh, I know. And boy, kids let you know when they feel like they're being ignored. So I want you to uh, fast forward 20 years. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned the word addiction, which I think is interesting because I don't think, I think if we all really had to admit the truth, it's not because there's something so important that we have to check. It's just that our phone vibrated or it made that little noise that tells something came in and it could be junk mail, but for some reason we are programmed to take a look That's at right. it. So it's 20 years in the future. Are people all going to have something, you know, their device and they're going to be constantly, constantly checking, checking, checking? Unfortunately, I think that's going to be true. No, no. Unfortunately. That's depressing. It is depressing. It, it will be some sort of wearable device. Uh, I think it'll be embedded well, in our clothing. Wait a second. You know the Nick, yeah. okay, your wearable device is fabulous if you've got great eyesight. Yeah. But that's tiny. I mean, after a certain age, okay. people that's fine. can't even read the back of a cereal <laughs> box, much less your watch. But I said it could be wearable. For example, my clothing. What happens if my clothing can squeeze me in certain places to give me certain messages, or I can adjust <laughs> its temperature? It's kind of cold That's today. I think segment. I need more heat. Hey, I want to get a pair of, I want to get a pair a of pants segment. like that. <laughs> okay, Nick, thank you. That's Nick Vontis. He's our tech expert, and uh, he's going to be designing his own square, uh, squeezable <laughs> clothing line soon. Thanks yeah, for being with us. Yeah, wait for it. Thanks. <laughs> okay, thanks, Nick.